Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about pre-qualifying your listing appointments. And I want to start by making a confession. I've been in real estate for 26 years. When I started in real estate, I was uh, very scared of pre-qualifying my appointments. I remember getting a script one of the questions that I, I was like, uh, I'm not gonna ask that. There was a question about something like this. Um, when I meet with you today, if everything sounds great or you're confident, whatever the script was, will you be ready to list with me today? And I'm thinking, as a brand new real estate agent, whether you're brand new, you've been a long time in real estate, some of you, you may hear that question and say, no way, oh my gosh, I'll never, I used to think like, I'm not asking them that. I don't want them to think that I'm going there to list the house. That would scare them away and they would cancel my appointment. I actually thought that way um, for a while. I still asked the question though, even though I was afraid of it, I would ask it. And I remember when I started asking this question and they would say, well, you know, usually it would be like, well, I don't know, you know, we'll see when you get here which what does that tell me nothing i have no idea what's going on i still don't know if they're going to list or not you know i learned a lot of things about pre-qualifying over time and i learned the hard way because i went on so many appointments my first and second year in real estate and didn't take the listing right there or later like i just didn't take the listing and all of those situations served as lessons for me. I didn't learn them always the first time something like that happened. No, I mean, I, I <laughs> for some things, I'm a slow learner. It's like, I gotta go through the same thing again and again and again and again before I say, well, this is not working. See, not pre-qualifying your appointments is this type of situation where you're gonna find yourself at a listing appointment, whatever you, if you don't wanna pre-qualify at all, you'll be in a big mess, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna be walking in to someone's home and know nothing about what is happening because pre-qualifying will answer a lot of questions for you on their motivation and their financial situation and their intentions with the meeting, what they're looking for. It will answer all of your questions. I remember my biggest fear in pre-qualifying and asking all the questions was, they're gonna cancel my appointment. I wanted to, you know, I, I, I thought that by going to the appointment, somehow I would end up taking the listing. That is not the case. I remember seeing and hearing and knowing agents who were selling 100, 200, hundreds of homes a year. And I'm thinking, it's impossible to do any type of high level number of sales in real estate without pre-qualifying your appointments because you're just pinning your wheels. Literally, it's like hit or miss, you know, because you don't know what's happening. So you can't be well prepared. So slowly, because it was a slow learning process, I realized that there were other questions on the pre-qualifying script that I was scared of asking. And whatever questions I avoided seemed to be the ones that came back to haunt me at the appointment. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I asked all the questions except will all the decision makers be there? for our appointment today. And then I show up and one of the, you know, the people on the deed is not there. And I'm like, you can't take a listing unless you get everybody's signature on it. So, ooh, that question I didn't ask. I was, you know, I didn't want to ask because, you know, sometimes I would ask and people would say, no, no, don't worry, you know, they're not going to be here, but I'm the decision or whatever I say, they'll do it. You know, I just tell them to sign, they said, and then I get to the end of the appointment and when it's time to sign, oh, I have to talk to the person who wasn't there. It happened every single time. And then I realized not only do I have to ask that question, but if they say, oh, no, no, they don't need to be here. You just come and talk to me. I decide everything. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, it's not true. 
So am I just gonna keep going? Because I, I went on so many appointments where somebody was missing from it because they talked me into, don't worry about it, they don't need to be here, and then I wouldn't take the listing. And at some point I decided, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not interested in going on appointments and wasting hours of my day because it takes hours to prepare the market and us, prepare all the paperwork, drive there, present, come back. It's like, what am I doing? Because I'm afraid to ask questions that all professionals ask. That's, the, that's how these agents that I was looking up to were doing what they were doing. Because there's no way to do it without pre-qualifying. And then, you know, there were questions about, do you have a mortgage? How much do you own the property? I'm not going to ask that. It's like, oh, they don't know who I am. Why would they tell me this? You know, I didn't want to ask because I, in my head, I would make up a story as to why they wouldn't want to answer. And they would get upset and they would say, it's none of your business. Why are you asking me that? Most people, especially when you know how to communicate, they don't respond like that. People don't answer your questions for one of two reasons. Either they think that you don't care, meaning you sound disinterested. The tone of voice with which you ask, it's like scripted. It's like you're just going through the motions and people are like, I don't want to answer. Like, I don't want to be interrogated here because so, it sounds like you don't care. The other reason why they don't answer is because they think you're going to disagree. And see, th these two reasons why people don't answer your questions, whether, and mostly pre-qualifying questions. I mean, my script, my FISBO expired script, and even circle prospecting script, they don't have a lot of questions. It's like one or two, it's like, because they're, they're powerful, pointed questions. Nobody wants to sit on the phone with a stranger and tell them where they're moving to. By the time you set the appointment and you're pre-qualifying, it's a different story because to get them to agree to meeting with you, meaning say yes to an appointment, you have to be in rapport. I mean, they're already, in, you know, they're already feeling good about this conversation with you. Now they're likely to answer your questions. If you sound interested and you don't sound disagreeable and condescending, like you're gonna argue and disagree with them, well, then they're not gonna answer your questions. So now you know why sometimes, and I, I my clients sometimes say that, well, you know, they don't wanna answer the pre-qualifying questions. Well, it's, the problem is not the questions. The problem is not pre-qualifying. The problem is the way you're communicating. And there are ways to communicate that cause people to want to engage in conversations with you. And think about it, pre-qualifying is preparation for your listing presentation. So it's a step that every great professional real estate agent does. They don't go on appointments just to like, well, let me come look at your house. Let me come preview. Let me see if I have a buyer. What a waste of everybody's time. So let me know if you have any questions on this. Put your comments below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell next to it because we upload videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.